Hello there. Welcome back to another episode as we study God's Word and learn about the love of God and how you and I can apply it to be better Christians. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Lippman. I'm excited to share this teaching with you as we continue to build on the foundation of love and loving God with our heart, soul, and mind and loving our neighbors ourselves. Welcome to the study. And by all means, I want you to like, share, subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit the bell notification, and all those good things. But more important than that, I want you to be sure that you grab our free resources. Listen, the ebook that goes along with this will help you to really take a deep dive and a deep lunge into the scriptures and to grow even more so than just watching me right now. So it's designed to basically whet your appetite and break down the key passage for the week in this teaching. But you go much, much deeper as you study throughout the week, as you go through the sessions week by week in the ebook. So I want you to make sure you grab that. And let's jump in now to part number six as we talk about Jesus, who is our loving example. As I said in the last episode, if we ever needed an example of love, it's definitely right now with all this going on in the world, with all the craziment, all the noise and all of the buffoonery that's happening in our world. We need a good example of what it means to love. And by all means, Jesus is our example. So make sure in the comments and like, share and be sure to subscribe. I want to share with you in this episode from John chapter three, verse 16 and 17. I'm sure that most of you who are looking at me right now or listening to me are very familiar with this passage of scripture. So I don't have to spend quite as much time on this one as I may have to in a passage that comes from Deuteronomy. But it reads like this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Man, you're talking about an example of love. Jesus is that example by all means. I mean, there was no one who could ever compare to his sacrifice and his love for humanity that he displayed in his personal life, in his personal journey from earth to glory and then back to heaven. And it was an expression of the love of God, that God's love for us was so vast, so incredible, so empowering, so enormous that he gave all he had for us, which was Jesus, his only begotten son. And of course, the giving of the Savior is evidence of the love of God. And not only did God display his love by giving his son, but his son displayed his love by giving his life that whosoever, what a powerful, beautiful word that is, whoever, anybody who believes in Jesus shall not perish, but have everlasting eternal life, eternal bliss with God. And notice verse 17. A lot of times when we quote John 3, 16, we rarely talk about verse 17. Let's talk about verse 17 for a moment. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Now, here's what the passage is saying. God did not send Jesus to tear us down, break us down, destroy us, and forget about us. That's what people will do. That's not what God did. God sent his son into this world to save us all through him. And through that relationship with Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with God. And what an example Christ displayed for us in that he was willing to obey his father, even though it cost him everything he had. And he did it not for himself, not even for God's benefit, not for the angel's benefit, but for the benefit of all humanity. That as we hear of him, as we believe in him, we can one day live with him throughout all of eternity. That, my friends, is the ultimate example of love, which is set by our ultimate example of love, Jesus Christ. 
And so we ought to love God for the love that he has shared with us through Christ's suffering and his resurrection. And Jesus is our ultimate example of love. You see, not long after Jesus spoke these famous words to Nicodemus, during that secret nighttime meeting when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, he was a famous Pharisee and did not want to be seen having dialogue with Jesus. And more than that, definitely would not have wanted to be overheard talking about eternal life. But he had a question that was probing his heart and he had to know from the master teacher what it was that he was teaching and how it all worked. So it was Nick at night. Jesus, after meeting with Nicodemus that night, just a little while later, he meets up with a woman who was at a well at the most hottest time of the day. She was at a well, but her life was not well. Yet, even though this woman was thought to have been a woman of ill repute, Jesus didn't shy away. He did not ignore her. He did not refuse to talk to her because she was a woman who had had a whole lot of men in her life. Jesus didn't treat her or anybody else any different. And that's how our love should be. Jesus drew near to people. He, he surrounded himself with people who were misfits, people who others thought were outcasts. And he met people right where they were in the middle of their brokenness, in the middle of their sin, in the middle of even adultery on one instance. That's the Lord that we serve. That's the example of our love. And then Jesus gave people what they needed the most. Whatever the need was, if it was a moment of reflection, a moment of attention, a moment of affirmation about who they were in spite of what they had done, that's exactly what he did. When he met the woman who had been taken in the act of adultery, minus the man who had been also in the act of adultery, unless he was one of those that brought the woman. <laughs> Jesus did not stone her, although the law of Moses would have justified that. But instead, after all of her accusers had left, he said, go and sin no more. That's an example of love. So we are also likewise to love others the way that Jesus loved them, meeting people where they are, helping people where they are, dealing with people in their hurts, not condemning, not bashing, not shaming, not tearing down, but doing what we can to show God's love, which always builds people up. Now, I know that this and last week are probably two of the most challenging lessons in this series. But I want you to hang in here with me because God wants us to love bigger and better than we do. God wants us to not hate, to not bash, to not downgrade grade or denigrate other people but to share and to show the love that God has shared and shown to us through Christ Jesus. So as you apply this teaching, as you delve into your lessons from the ebook, I want you to think about that. Who can I love better? Who do I need to love more? Who do I need to show more acceptance and appreciation to? As always, we will end with a special prayer. I'd like for you to pray it with me as we go to God and ask for his help. Let's pray. Gracious Father, you loved the world so much that you sent Jesus into it to die for it. Jesus, you are the perfect example of love. Jesus, you drew near to people who were different from you, and you loved them. Jesus, you drew near to broken, sinful people. Jesus, you gave people what they most needed. Brothers and sisters, I pray 
that as you apply this lesson this week, that you will love somebody deeper, that you will show God's love to people who are different from you, that you would not be judgmental and condemning, but that you would be accepting to people and loving toward people just as the Lord has been towards you. I enjoyed sharing this with you. Hey, don't miss the conclusion. We're going to be talking about the greatest of these. You don't want to miss next week. God bless you. I love you. We'll talk next week.